In medicine, cardiotocography is a technical means of recording the fetal heartbeat and the uterine contractions during pregnancy. The machine used to perform the monitoring is called a cardiotocograph, more commonly known as an electronic fetal monitor. Fetal monitoring was invented by doctors Alan Bradfield, or Van Hess and Edward Hahn. A refined version was later developed for Hewlett-Packard by Conrad Hamaker. Interpretation In the U.S., the Eunice Kennedy Shrive National Institute of Child Health and Human Development sponsored a workshop to develop a standardized nomenclature for use in interpreting intrapartum fetal heart rate and uterine contraction patterns. This nomenclature has been adopted by the Association of Women's Health, Obstetric, and Neonatal Nurses, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada have also published consensus statements on standardized nomenclature for fetal heart rate patterns. Interpretation of a CTG tracing requires both qualitative and quantitative description of uterine activity, baseline fetal heart rate, baseline FHR variability, presence of accelerations, periodic or episodic decelerations, changes or trends of FHR patterns over time, uterine activity. There are several factors used in assessing uterine activity. Frequency the amount of time between the start of one contraction to the start of the next contraction. Duration the amount of time from the start of a contraction to the end of the same contraction. Intensity a measure of how strong a contraction is. With external monitoring, this necessitates the use of palpation to determine relative strength. With an IUPC, this is determined by assessing actual pressures as graphed on the paper. Resting tone a measure of how relaxed the uterus is between contractions. With external monitoring, this necessitates the use of palpation to determine relative strength. With an IUPC, this is determined by assessing actual pressures as graphed on the paper. Interval the amount of time between the end of one contraction to the beginning of the next contraction. The NICHD nomenclature defines uterine activity by quantifying the number of contractions present in a 10-minute window, averaged over 30 minutes. Uterine activity may be defined as Normal less than or equal to 5 contractions in 10 minutes, averaged over a 30-minute window. Tachysystole more than 5 contractions in 10 minutes, averaged over a 30-minute window. Baseline fetal heart rate The NICHD nomenclature defines baseline fetal heart rate as the baseline FHR is determined by approximating the mean FHR rounded to increments of 5 beats per minute during a 10-minute window excluding accelerations and decelerations and periods of marked FHR variability. There must be at least two minutes of identifiable baseline segments in any 10-minute window, or the baseline for that period is indeterminate. In such cases, it may be necessary to refer to the previous 10-minute window for determination of the baseline. Abnormal baseline is termed bradycardia when the baseline FHR is less than 110 BPM. It is termed tachycardia when the baseline FHR is greater than 160 BPM. Baseline FHR variability The NICHD nomenclature defines baseline FHR variability as Baseline FHR variability is determined in a 10-minute window, excluding accelerations and decelerations. Baseline FHR variability is defined as fluctuations in the baseline FHR that are irregular in amplitude and frequency. The fluctuations are visually quantitated as the amplitude of the peak to trough in BPM. Using this definition, the baseline FHR variability is categorized by the quantitative amplitude as 
absent to undetectable, minimal greater than undetectable, but less than or equal to 5 bpm, moderate 6 to 25 bpm, marked greater than 25 bpm, accelerations. The NICHD nomenclature defines an acceleration as a visually apparent abrupt increase in FHR. An abrupt increase is defined as an increase from the onset of acceleration to the peak in less than or equal to 30 seconds. To be called an acceleration, the peak must be greater than or equal to 15 bpm, and the acceleration must last greater than or equal to 15 seconds from the onset to return to baseline. A prolonged acceleration is greater than or equal to 2 minutes but less than 10 minutes in duration. An acceleration lasting greater than or equal to 10 minutes is defined as a baseline change. Before 32 weeks of gestation, accelerations are defined as having a peak greater than or equal to 10 bpm and a duration of greater than or equal to 10 seconds. Periodic or episodic decelerations Periodic refers to decelerations that are associated with contractions. Episodic refers to those not associated with contractions. There are four types of decelerations as defined by the NICHD nomenclature, all of which are visually assessed. Early deceleration, usually symmetrical, gradual decrease and return of FHR associated with a uterine contraction. A gradual deceleration has onset to nadir of 30 seconds or more. The nadir of the deceleration occurs at the same time as the peak of the contraction. In most cases the onset nadir and recovery of the deceleration are coincident with the beginning peak and ending of the contraction, respectively. Late deceleration, usually symmetrical gradual decrease and return of the FHR associated with a uterine contraction. A gradual deceleration has onset to nadir of 30 seconds or more. The deceleration is delayed in timing, with nadir occurring after the peak of the contraction. As with early decelerations, the onset nadir and recovery of the deceleration occurs after the beginning peak and ending of the contraction, respectively. Variable deceleration, abrupt decrease in FHR, defined as from onset of the deceleration to the beginning of the FHR nadir of less than 30 seconds. The decrease in FHR is calculated from the onset to the nadir of the deceleration. The decrease in FHR is greater than or equal to 15 beats per minute, lasting greater than or equal to 15 seconds, and less than 2 minutes in duration. When variable decelerations are associated with uterine contractions, their onset, depth, and duration commonly vary with successive uterine contractions. Prolonged deceleration, decrease in FHR from baseline greater than or equal to 15 bpm, lasting greater than or equal to 2 minutes, but less than 10 minutes of deceleration greater than or equal to 10 minutes is a baseline change. Additionally decelerations can be recurrent or intermittent based on the frequency within a 20-min window. FHR Pattern Classification The NICHD work group proposed terminology of a three-tiered system to replace the older undefined terms reassuring and non-reassuring. Category I. Tracings with all these findings present are strongly predictive of normal fetal acid base status at the time of observation and the fetus can be followed in a standard manner. Baseline rate 110 to 160 bpm, moderate variability, absence of late, or variable decelerations. Early decelerations and accelerations may or may not be present. Category 2. Tracing is not predictive of abnormal fetal acid base status, but evaluation and continued surveillance and re-evaluations are indicated. Bradycardia with normal baseline variability tachycardia minimal or marked baseline variability of FHR accelerations. Absence of induced accelerations after fetal stimulation periodic or episodic decelerations. Longer than 2 min but shorter than 10 min, recurrent late decelerations with moderate baseline variability variable decelerations with other characteristics such as slow return to baseline, overshoots of shoulders, seen, 
Category 3. Tracing is predictive of abnormal fetal acid base status at the time of observation. This requires prompt evaluation and management. Absence of baseline variability with recurrent late or variable decelerations or bradycardia, or sinusoidal fetal heart rate.